Shalom, Israel. Most high in Christ. Blessed. This is 15 minutes with the captains. I am Captain Amaziah. With me today, I have Soldier Isaac. Soldier Isaac is with me today. All right, brothers and sisters, we're going to tackle another scripture misused by our people, and particularly misused by the tribe of Benjamin. Okay, we're going to, we're going to tackle the topic of Renja Art, not your garment. Okay, that's a Benji classic scripture they would use to say, oh, you can wear what you want. I just, oh, I have to believe and, and confess the name of God and Jesus Christ, and that's all I got to do. Okay, I ain't got to wear that. I ain't got to wear this. I could wear the tight pants, the women, right? So we're going to tackle that topic today. Give me Joel 2. Let's start right there in the scripture. Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2, verse 13. And rend your heart and not your garments. And turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, uh -huh. and repenteth him of the evil. So now, the scripture says, rend your heart, not your garment. That's the only thing our people know. They don't know nothing about the rest of that scripture. The all they know that's embedded in their heart, this is the scripture right here. That little part right there is going to justify me. My, my, my woman being able to wear the tight pants and show her behind everybody and do this and do that. That's what our people know. The rest of the scripture, they don't give two craps about. Read it again. And rend your heart and not your garments. And turn unto the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. And repenteth him of the evil. And repenteth him of the evil. So now, what was the custom in Israel why it said, rend your heart, not your garment. Let's go to 2 Chronicles 34 and 27. Let's go right there. What is the custom? Let's go. 2 Chronicles chapter 34, verse 27. 27. Because thine heart was tender, uh -huh. and thou didst humble thyself you, before God. You did humble yourself before God. When thou heardest his words against this place. When and, you heard the words against this place, go ahead. And against the inhabitants thereof. Uh-huh. And didst thyself before me. And didst rend thy clothes. And humbled thyself before me. Since you humbled yourself and did what? And didst rend thy clothes. And you rend your clothes. And wept before me. And wept and weep before me. And I have even heard thee also, saith the Lord. I have heard you. Because you did these this act. Of repentance, I have heard thee. Okay, so that's a that's one example of rending your of, of a an example of rending your clothes. Okay, Second Samuel three and thirty. Second Samuel, let's go there. Let's go. Second Samuel chapter three and verse thirty. So Joab and Abishai his brother slew Abner uh -huh. because he had slain their brother. As he yelled at Gibeon in the battle. Read. And David said to Joab. And David, King David said to Joab what? And to all the people that were with him. And all the people that were with him, do what? Rend your clothes. Do what? Rend your clothes. Rend your clothes. And gird you with sackcloth. Uh-huh. And mourn. And do what? And mourn. And mourn. Before Abner. So they were in mourning. When they rend their clothes, they are in mourning. Read. And King David himself followed the beer. Go to 2 Kings 18 and 11. So now we read two scriptures of our people rending their clothes in mourning or in repentance. Let's go. 2 Kings chapter 18, verse 11. And the king of Assyria did carry away Israel unto Assyria. Uh -huh. And put them in Hala and in Haber. By the river of Gozen. Read. And in the cities of the Medes. Why, why, why was the king of Assyria allowed to do this? Because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord their God. That's why we're always at the bottom of society today, brothers and sisters. Because we refuse God's laws. We despise God's laws. Read on. But transgressed his covenant. Uh-huh. And all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded. Uh -huh. And would not hear them. We wouldn't hear. Nor do them. And we wouldn't do what Moses said to do. We wouldn't do the commandments of God. Jump to verse 17. Verse 17. And the king of Assyria sent Tartan and Rabsaris and Rabsaka from Laches to King Hezekiah 
with a great host against Jerusalem. Against the Israelites. Read. And they went up and came to Jerusalem. Read. And when they were come up, they came and stood by the conduit of the upper pool, which is in the highway of the fullest field. Okay. Now, here comes a group of Assyrians against our people. Jump to verse 25. Verse 25. Am I now come up without the Lord against this place to destroy it? So now, the Assyrian talking to the children of Israel says what? Read it again. Am I now come up without the Lord against this place to destroy it? Am I come up without God on my side to destroy you, the Israelites, because of what? We read it in verse 11. They obeyed not the voice of the Lord, brothers and sisters. We didn't want to keep God's commandments. So now this heathen is saying, God is with me. God sent me to destroy you, man. Go ahead. The Lord said to me, go up against this land and destroy it. Y'all see that thing? Go up against this land and destroy it. Now let's see what, was, what, what message did they take back to the king. Go ahead. Read verse 37. Verse 37. Then came Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, which was over the household, and Shipna, the scribe, and Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder, uh -huh. to Hezekiah with their clothes rent. With their clothes what? Rent. They rent their clothes when they heard what the Assyrians were going to do to them. They rent their clothes, meaning they tear their clothes. That was the custom of the Israelites in mourning, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And told him the words of Rabshakeh. Read. Now, let's see what King Hezekiah does. Read. 19 verse 1. Second Kings 19 verse 1. Very next verse. And it came to pass when King Hezekiah heard it. When he received the message from the men that rent their clothes, what did he, King Hezekiah do? That he rent his clothes. He did the same thing. I can't believe it, man. We're we going to get killed by these guys. Go ahead. And covered himself with sackcloth uh -huh. and went into the house of the Lord. He went to go see the Lord. Lord, I got to do something because these Assyrians, they ain't, they ain't no joke. I got to I rent my clothes. So what is the problem here? Second Chronicles 7 and 14. We all know this Christian scripture right here. This is what a Christian will use. Second Chronicles 7, 14. Let's go. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. This is what the Lord is looking for. Let's go. If my people. My people. Who's my people? The Israelites. When you read Exodus 3 and 10, that'll tell you who the Israelites are. That they're God's people. Read it again. If my people, my people, which are called by my name, the children of Israel, shall humble themselves. What they got to do? Shall humble themselves. No, defend themselves. Shall humble themselves. No, justify themselves. Humble themselves. That's our problem, brothers and sisters. Nobody wants to humble themselves before the Lord. Go ahead. And pray. Uh-huh. And seek my face. Seek my face means you learn these scriptures, you apply God's law. That's seeking the face of the Lord. Read. And turn from their wicked ways. What does Israel got to do? And turn from their wicked ways. If we turn from our wicked ways, then. After we turn from our wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. Then I will hear them after they turn from their wicked ways. And will forgive their sin. I'm going to forgive their sin when they turn from their wicked ways. And will heal their land. And I'm going to heal them, brothers and sisters. Hold up. It says, seek my face. So let's go to Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Let's go to the word of God in the law. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Because we got to humble us. That's what the scripture said, right? Yes, sir. Okay, let's go. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. The woman. The who? The woman, the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. What pertains to a man? When you read Exodus chapter 28, you find out that pants were given to the man. It was given to Aaron and his sons, males. It was a given to females, brothers and sisters. Okay, read that again. The woman, the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So now the woman must humble herself. And return to what God said. No matter how she feels about, oh, I don't feel comfortable in a skirt. Oh, I don't feel comfortable in a dress all day long. I can't do my manly thing no more if I'm in a dress. Okay? You got to humble yourself. You ain't got to buck and be like, well, rend your art, not your garment. So me not have to do that. No, 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 no. Uh-uh. You got to do what the scripture says, sister. Read it again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Read. Neither shall a man 
put on a woman's garment. And a man shall not put on what pertains to women. Bra, panties, skirts, high heels, dresses. Right? So that's what the man is not supposed to wear. Okay? Read on. For all that do so. For all that do so. All that do what? Cross dress. That's what this is called, brothers and sisters. We know what this is. It is called cross dressing. Okay? So it says, for all that do so. Are abomination unto the Lord thy the God. The Lord hates that thing when you read Jeremiah 44 and 4. Okay? So now, is there a judgment for our people dressing out of order and justifying that thing? Zephaniah 1 and 8. Let's go. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 8. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. When you sacrifice something, what happens? Something gets slaughtered. A lamb, a goat, uh, a bull, a bullox, right? In the day of the Lord's sacrifice. Is, he, is the Lord sacrificing animals? No, he's going to be sacrificing your sinful behind. Right. Okay? Read that again. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. Read. That I will punish the princes. I'm going to punish the princes. And the king's children. The Israelites. And all the, such as are clothed with strange apparel. So what would be considered strange apparel for a woman? Her wearing pants. That's strange to the Lord. How do we know that's strange to the Lord? Because he gave us a law in Deuteronomy 22 and verse 5. That's how we know that. Okay? Same with the man. How do we know a man, uh, what's strange for a man? Well, if he's, in, if he's dressed like Dwayne Wade's son, okay, we know that's going to be a slaughter for him. Okay? That's how we know that thing. All right? Let's go to, back to Leviticus 20. No, let's go to Leviticus 20 and 40. Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 40. So that's the judgment for all that cross dress, brothers and sisters. Levi 26 and 40. I'm sorry. Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 40 through 41. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 40. If they shall confess their iniquity. That's what we all must do, brothers and sisters, confess our sins before the Lord. We must read and find out where we are going off in the law of God and confess that thing. Go ahead. And the iniquity of their fathers. And our fathers have taught us the sins, okay? We have carried on the sins of our fathers for generation to generation to generation. Go ahead. With their trespass, which they trespassed against me. It's against God. Go ahead. And that also they have walked contrary unto me. Read. And that I al ha also so have walked. If, if you are a sister still wearing pants, you are walking contrary to the Lord. If you are a brother wearing uh, panties or uh, high heels, you are walking contrary to the Lord. Right. Go ahead. And that I also have walked contrary unto them. Uh huh. And have brought them into the land of their enemies. Do you think it was just of the the Edomites, the Caucasian, and the Arabs that they did this on their own, brothers and sisters, by putting us in this trans-Sub-Saharan slave trade and the transatlantic slave trade? You think they did this on their own? No, it was of the Lord, brothers and sisters. The Lord put the Spirit on these nations to come to come against us and put us in slavery and spread us all throughout the earth. Read that again. Read that just that part. And have brought them into the land of their enemies. We are in the land of our enemies. Now what? If then. If after that. Their uncircumcised hearts. Their what? Uncircumcised hearts. So the scripture said we have an uncircumcised heart. What must be done with that uncircumcised heart? Hold that. Go back to Joel 2.13. Just give me that, that first three uh, words. It says we have an uncircumcised heart. Or an uncircumcised mind. Go ahead. Joel chapter 2, verse 13. Do what? And rend your heart. Do what with your heart? Rend your heart. Tear away that uncircumcised heart, brothers and sisters. That's what we must do. That uncircumcised, evil, uh, uh, malicious, that nasty mind we have, we must rend that thing right there. Go back. Go back. Go back. Give it to me again. Verse 41. Verse 41. And that I also have walked contrary unto them. Uh-huh. And have brought them into the land of their enemies. Uh-huh. If then. After that. Their uncircumcised hearts be humbled. Do, be what? Be humbled. Humble yourself to the laws of God, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And they then. And after that. Accept 
of the punishment of their iniquity. We must accept of the punishment of what was done to us because we were in the wrong. Now go back to Joel 2, and I want you to start at verse 12. Joel chapter 2, verse 12. Therefore also now, saith the Lord, uh -huh. turn ye even to me with, Do, with what? Turn ye even to me with all your heart. Hold that. It said, turn with all your heart. What is the heart? Mark 7, 21. Let's get it. Mark chapter 7, verse 21. New Testament. Let's see what Christ says in the New Testament about, about your heart. Let's go to the New Testament. Let's see what Christ says. Mark chapter 7, verse 21. For from within. From within. Out of the heart of men. Out of the heart of men proceeds what? Proceed evil thoughts. So you don't think with this organ right here in your chest. You think with this right here, your mind, this is your heart. Your mind is your heart in the scriptures. Read it again. For, for from within, out of the heart of men. Proceed what? Proceed evil thoughts. Evil thoughts that you must rend. Read. Adulteries. Adulteries come out of your mind. Fornications. Fornications come out of your mind. Murders. Murder. Thefts. Theft. Covetousness. Uh -huh. Wickedness. Uh -huh. Deceit. Uh -huh. Lasciviousness. Mm. An evil eye. Blasphemy. Pride. Foolishness. Read. All these evil things. All these evil things in your heart. Come from within. Come from within your mind. And defile the man. And defile the man, brothers and sisters. Go back now. Go back. Now we know what's in your heart. Right? Now we know why the scripture says, rend your heart. Read it again. Joel 12. chapter 2, verse 12. Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart. With all your mind, brothers and sisters, turn to the Lord. And with fasting, and with weeping, uh -huh. and with mourning. And with what? And with mourning. Read. And rend your heart. Do what? Rend your heart. Now it says rend your heart. Why? And not your garments. It says rend your heart, not your garments. What, what does that mean? It says change your mindset. You won't, you won't face the judgments to have to rend your garment, brothers and sisters. That's all it's saying. That's it. If you, don't, if, if you change your ways, you won't face the judgments. The other nation won't be on top of you. You won't have to do the custom that we did in Israel of rending your garment or being on the bottom all the time, being, being uh, uh, um, in sorrow, in sorrowness of heart, in sorrowness of mind all the time. So it says rend your mind. Change your mindset. In other words, repent. Humble yourself and repent. Read it again. 13. And, and rend your heart. Rend your heart. And not your garments. Not your, if you rend your heart, you change your mindset, you won't face a judgment. You won't have to rend your garment. Go ahead. And turn unto the Lord your God. It's a turn to the Lord. Don't turn to the Lord and justify, oh, I can wear these tight pants. Rend your heart, not your garment. No. You got to turn to the Lord and do what the Lord said to do. Read. For he is gracious and merciful, uh -huh. slow to anger. So what does that mean? That means if you repent, he will show you mercy. But you can't get no mercy if you are in the midst of sin and justifying your sin. Go ahead. And of great kindness. Uh -huh. And repenteth him of the evil. His repentance is not our repentance. His repentance, all right, he repented. He changed his mindset. He rendered his heart. I'm going to show him mercy. And brothers and sisters, that is 15 minutes with the captains. That is breaking down Joel 2.13. Rend your heart, not your garments. I'm Captain Amaziah. And I'm Soldier Isaac. And we say shalom. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, Nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana. Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth